Hey everyone, as we hit that 100,000 subscriber milestone, I thought it'd be fun to kind of look back. You always see these pictures of how it started, how it's going. So I'm gonna take a step back and walk through really how we got to where we are today. Now, I actually started out creating content on the web just as text articles. This was really even before blogging, it was an NT frequently asked question site. So I would create multiple entries every day on that website. Then I started creating magazine articles and I was asked to create some books. And my first YouTube video was actually just as an accompaniment to one of the books I was writing. I think it was The Complete Guide to Windows Server 2008. And really up until kind of Thanksgiving 2019, so just over two years ago, the YouTube channel was purely saying I would sporadically create content for and it was really an accompaniment to something else, be it a magazine article or a book or an FAQ I was writing. It was really only two and a bit years ago, I really started to give focus to the YouTube channel as the primary kind of media for which I was creating content. So if it would be fun to kind of look back at some of those and just see how it has evolved. So with that, let's kind of hook over to the first video I ever actually created. So I'll kind of hit play on this. So this was an accompaniment to my complete uh, guide to Windows Server 2008. This was September 2008. And this was, I put up a little whiteboard behind the desk of my office. It was an old video camera I had. As you can see, it faced the window. You can see the reflection off the board. And clearly I don't, ever have hair in my entire history, but this was really just that a compliment to talk about things to help. Now skip forward to July 2009, I got a slightly different camera. I worked out to put wooden shutters on the window to stop it reflecting off the whiteboard. I added some actual side studio type lights, but again, this was still just content to help. Then fast forward a lot of time, March 2014. So I changed job to be an architect in the Dallas Microsoft Technology Center. And they had these smart boards. This was a projector based onto a pen sensitive area that you could create content on. And I loved this. This was absolutely fantastic to me because you could actually go and on this board, you had pages and I loved those pages. I loved the idea of creating multiple different pages. I could jump forward and back. You did have color on that. Obviously I got a better camera, but I still created content very, very infrequently. It was not my primary mechanism at all. It was just something I would create, hey, as a side thing of what I was doing. Now, as you continue on, what then happened was the MTC switched out from using the smart boards and they got the Surface Hub devices, which ran their own Microsoft whiteboard software. And I'll be totally honest, I hated it at first. I complained and complained and complained about the lack of page functionality on the Microsoft whiteboard. I was used to the smart board software and the pages. I did not like that infinite canvas idea at all. Now I did eventually get used to it and work out how to organize and now I really do prefer it. But that was a, a huge jump for me to kind of change how I worked on those whiteboards. And then towards the end of November 2019, I changed role. And this role was now working from home as a cloud solution architect. So I lost access to those Surface Hubs at the office. Now, because I was at home, I suddenly gained two hours a day in travel I wasn't doing. I'd also got burnt out on doing FAQs and that type of material. And I thought this was really a good sign to start focusing on the YouTube channel. I bought myself a Dell 55 inch interactive screen. I bought a little nook to connect it to. I set this up in my pool room upstairs. So I'd have to put the camera on the pool table. I had like a 1080 camera. I had a couple of side lights. Originally I used a camcorder, but I did switch to a Nikon Z50 camera because I read they were better to actually film this type of material in. 
but it was a giant pain. Every time I wanted to create a video, I had to go and set everything up, film, then put all the stuff away. So it really made it fairly infrequent. I actually wanted to create content. Also, because of the nature of the camera, it could only record short amounts. You'd have to connect it up to something else to actually do the recordings or it was very time limited. So that was kind of painful as well. So I found this Shinobi camera slash recorder screen that you connected to the camera and that would record really for infinite amounts of time. But any demos I was running was a Camtasia on the display and then I had to edit it all together. So that was super painful as well. Now I did, initially I did actually have um, just side adverts on the YouTube channel where it was just like an image because I'd read that if you didn't have anything, it would impact YouTube's suggestion of your content. So I used to just have side images because I thought you had to, I, I really got almost no money from it. But I did some tests and I don't think it had any impact, which is when kind of I turned all advertising off. Now fast forward to May 2020, and my eldest son moved out. We did some rearranging in the house and we had now a spare room. We wanted to also test some brick texture we wanted to put elsewhere in the house. So we tested it in this now spare room. I moved my display down to this spare room and set up the camera and the lights permanently. So now it was much, much easier to create content. I could create content whenever I wanted. There was some reverb in the room, so I'd have to remove that post edit, but not too painful. The other thing I discovered was, actually for a suggestion of a friend, Sean, was OBS Studio. One of the challenges I had was actually seeing what was on the screen behind me during demos. So initially OBS Studio was just a means to duplicate what was on the touch screen to a screen I had down on the floor so I could see what I was editing. But it quickly became obvious, well, why would I not just connect the camera to my PC and record everything for OBS Studio and do all the switching for OBS Studio and remove any of that kind of miserable, painful editing process. So then July 2020, I upgraded to a 75 inch Dell Interactive screen, kind of bonuses at work. Again, I, I get no money from the channel, so this is all my own money, this is my hobby. And I also built a PC with a proper graphics card in it. So I added a couple of extra screens as well now I could really easily create content. There was really no post editing. I played around with OBS Studio even more. The logo I could just add as part of the OBS Studio, the transitions I could add. I moved to a Nikon Z5 camera because that supported power from USB. I used an Elgato capture card directly into the PC and really it became super seamless. The only editing I do now is to add in the title of the video that's the only thing I have to do post edit. And that's really where we got to. And now if I actually think about today and where we got to right now, well, my wife actually went and added curtains to all around the outside of the room. So she went and added all of those and that removed the reverb problem. So the editing I used to have to do just to get rid of the reverb well, that went away as well. Now, if we look back in that time in terms of the subscribers, here we can go and see if we go back in history. So I talked about, well, I think I had like eight subscribers and it really didn't do very much. It started to go up little bits, okay. But it, it stayed pretty flat. It started to rise. I started to create a few more videos but it was basically here in November 2019. It's at this point I really started to focus on the channel. So I had 18,000 subscribers and that's when I started to focus on the channel. And you can see here, that's where it's really starting to go up uh, to where we are right now. So right now we're at this 100,880. I still tweak little things about the channel for example, I recently changed my microphone to a Sennheiser Pro Audio MKH416 shotgun. And I'm using that to connect to an Elgato Wave XLR because a few people mentioned about the sound. So this is really as good as it's gonna get. 
And so this is really the journey. Now, in terms of kind of audience, people always kind of asked about, hey, the audience of the channel. So if we just look at all well, basic views, okay, like 1.1 million, this is over the last 90 days. So we can see some basic information about the environment, hey, right? watch hours, uh, subscribers. Obviously, it tends to get quieter at the weekends when I, I look at my general audience. Honestly, when I look at reach, I really don't understand much of what this is saying. I do not focus on these areas at all. So I don't really have a good idea of what this is telling me. Um, same for engagement. I really don't pay any attention to this either. From an audience perspective, it's kind of fun. If we scroll down to so top geographies. So United States is 25%. India is 14% near the United Kingdom. Um, basically, two thirds of my audience are not subscribed, so go and subscribe. 92% uh, uh, male, 8% female. Age group tends to be the 25, I guess, to the 44 year olds is most of my audience. And as, as revenue, I don't make any money. Um, apparently, I've made half a cent in August. I have no idea how I made half a cent in August. But as I kind of talked about, I don't make money. All the advertising is turned off so it doesn't get in your way. So that's, uh, that's the channel. And so really that, that was it. So that's where we are today. That's how we got here. Just slow and steady. It really has only been the last two years and maybe two months that I really focused on the channel, created regular content. Again, it's still my hobby. It's still something I enjoy and just wanna create. People have asked me now, I've hit the 100,000, what's the new goal? The 100,000 and the silver play button, hopefully I'll get confirmation of that at some point. I don't really have a number goal anymore. It's my hobby, I enjoy creating the content. I just wanna carry on, enjoy creating the content and help as many people as I can. So thank you for your help in getting to this point and being part of this journey. And uh, no, until the next video, take care.